Greetings again in the mighty name of Jesus. It's good to be with you. And uh, I'm going to cover some things that we have talked about before. But I'm going to be talking about uh, those blessings uh, in the name of Jesus. Everything we do must be done in the name of the Lord. And uh, thank God for the name of Jesus, which is above every name. You know, in that name, the Bible says that we have uh, authority. And uh, let, let me take you back to Genesis uh, chapter 1. It talks about the, the, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So God began to create everything that you see now was created by God. He created the heaven and the earth by his word. And so God made man in his image. Now here comes man. God made man in his image. He says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So to find out what man is, I need to find out what God is. Well, John 4, 24 said that God is a spirit. So if God is a spirit, then you and I, we are created in his image. So if God is a spirit, then we are a spirit being, live or housed in your body. Now, even though you're looking at me through the monitor, you don't really see me. You see the house that I live in. And uh, the house that I live in is, is the real me. If I would step outside of my body, it would look like me, but it would be a spiritual body. So I live in this body, and as your body needs to be fed food to survive, you need food for vitamins, you need food for the right ingredients that will bless your body to keep your body healthy and running smoothly. And so therefore you need the right kinds of food into your body. Well, the real you, which is a spirit being, is it needs the food of the Word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. As natural food is for the body, the Word of God is for spiritual food for the inward man. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 4.20, it says, my son, Attend to my words, incline thy ear to my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to them that find them, and help to all thy flesh. So your food that you eat daily, or whatever you, when you do eat, is life for your body. Well, the word of God is life to my spirit man. And so God created man, and he wanted man for uh, to have someone to power with, to fellowship with. And the Bible said that God walked in the cool of the day and talked with his man. And so God made man in his image and made him the God of this world. Adam was the God of this world, that God gave him that authority. He said, you go into the garden and uh, that's your, you, you're to monitor, to watch over the garden, protect it. Uh, Adam had all that authority to name the animals. And so it's amazing the authority that Adam had. But the devil didn't like that. The devil wanted that authority. The devil wanted it. And so the devil deceived Eve. The Bible says Eve was deceived, but the man was not. See, Adam went into this with his eyes open. Adam followed Eve. Eve was deceived by the devil. Adam committed high treason, sold out to the devil the authority that he had. And so the devil, the Bible said, then at that moment, the devil became the God of this world. And he is still the God of this world, but he is not your God. The reason why you see all these things happen on this earth is because the devil is still the God of this world, but his days are numbered. See, he's got a lease on this earth. When did he get that authority? Adam gave it to him. All the authority that Adam had, it was delivered to the devil. But God had a plan. God had a plan. 
And that plan, it would take a while to go into all of it, but to make a long story short, Jesus came, lived and died on this earth, shed his blood, and uh, took our place in hell. The Bible says, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the uh, belly of a well, a well of a belly, the Bible says that uh, as he was there three days and three nights, so the Son of Man shall be in the heart of the earth. And so Jesus took back the authority that the devil had that Adam gave to him and gave it back to you and I because Jesus, when he was risen from the dead, remember he said, Behold, I give unto you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. So therefore you have this authority. Then he said, Go out in my name. So the authority is in the name of Jesus. So there's so much to be said about this subject. But just I just want to get give you the gist of it concerning the name of Jesus, that power is in the name. The Bible, the, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So the only way that a person can go to heaven and miss hell, he must be born again. The Bible says uh, that uh, in that name, Faith in that name. Neither is there salvation in another. There's no salvation except through the name of Jesus. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So there's blessings in the name of Jesus. You know, uh, going to church does not make you a Christian. We go to church because we are a Christian. Paying your tithes, giving offerings, don't make you a Christian. We give tithes and offerings because we are Christians. So therefore, we are blessed through salvation. And the Bible says, giving thanks unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath delivered us from the authority of, of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In this kingdom, the Bible says you have the authority that God has given back to mankind. Now, the devil is still the God of this world, but he is not your God. He is not your God. You still have authority over him. You still have authority over the elements of the earth, if you believe it. You can, the, the Bible says, what you bind shall be bound, what you lose shall be loosed. So therefore, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, talking about the blessings of this name. Wherefore, God also hath highly, hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the name of, uh, of God the Father. I use the name of Jesus often. Every time I pray, I always say in the name of Jesus. When I pray, usually I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. Then I pray. When I end it, I say, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. The Bible says one day every tongue, every knee shall bow to that name Jesus. Even the devil himself, all the demons, principalities, powers, mind, dominions, and wicked spirits in our places, when it's all said and done at the end of this age, they'll bow their knee and say, Jesus is Lord. So there's power in that name. There's blessings in that name. Now let me say this again. All power, all authority that Jesus has, has been invested in his name and has been given to the church. You know, if you're tempted to walk in fear, you say in the name of Jesus, fear, get thee behind me. When the devil puts sickness on you, you say in the name of Jesus, I bind you in the name. I use the name all the time because I have faith in the name of Jesus. See, your reputation 
is in your name. When you think of a person's name or people that you highly respect and maybe they're in the gospel, a minister of the gospel, whoever, but they've fallen and ministered whatever. And every time you hear that name, you think about what they did or what they didn't do. You usually think about that. You think about the reputation. So we need to have a good reputation. Well, Jesus had a perfect reputation. And everything that God is has been invested in his name. Invested in his name, that means to array in the symbol of honor. To furnish with power and authority. To invest in a name. To grant someone control or authority over or to endow with quality. So you have a name at your disposal. When you pray, don't forget that name that had been given to the church. The all power and all authority has been invested in that name. Of course, there's power in the word of God. And when you resist the devil, I know ever resist the devil without using the name of Jesus. I use their scriptures, but I say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, take your hands off my body because it is written, and I always back it up with the word of God. So the two most important things that you need, the blessings is the blessings of the word of God and the blessings in the name of Jesus. Everything you do, the Bible says, everything you do in word and deed, do it in the name of the Lord. Do it in the name of Jesus. So therefore, with that name that's been given to you, that name is for you to use against the enemy. That name is to be used in prayer. That name is to be used in combat when you pray. You got saved by that name. Again, let me quote this. The Bible says in Romans 10, 8, 9, 10, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe that God has raised him from the dead, that shall be saved. So salvation comes through faith in the name of Jesus, through the word of God. And therefore, since you have that name, you have this God-given privilege, this God-given right, this God-given authority to walk in the word of God with the name of Jesus and bind the devil and tell the devil to get his hands off your family, your finances, whatever. Use that name. See, since you have that authority, authority doesn't beg. A, a, a authority doesn't ask the devil to move. Authority commands him. See, a lot of times people don't realize that they have this blessing of the name of Jesus to use against the wiles of the devil. They don't realize that they have this blessing to use the name of Jesus and the word of God. And you don't have to ask the devil to leave you alone. You don't have to tell God, get, him, get the devil off my back. No, God says you do it. Behold, I give unto you that name. I give unto you that word. I'm giving to you that power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said, nothing shall by any enemies hurt you. I live by that name. I live by the word of God. I live by the name of Jesus. Amen. Every time I speak the name of Jesus, I always got the word of God to follow. Amen. Remember when Jesus was led to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil? And the devil came to him and says, If thou this, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. And the devil gave him a little scripture. But Jesus responded and says, it is also written. So when the devil comes to you with the scripture, he'll give you half truth. Always know the contents of the scriptures and say, no, it is written. So therefore, have faith in that name. Have faith in the name of Jesus. How do we have faith in God? We have faith in the name of Jesus. We have faith in the word. So the authority that you have doesn't, doesn't ask it demands, it commands. You know, the measure of the ability of the Lord Jesus Christ is in the value of his name. And all that is invested in that name belongs to, to us because Jesus gave us the use of his name. 
You know, you have the authority to use the name of Jesus in prayer. You and I have the authority to use that name in combat, to use that name. So therefore, John chapter 14, verse 13 says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Now notice, notice, notice he didn't say that will I give. He said that will I do. The word here, ask, is a demand word. So really in the original it says, and whatsoever you shall demand in my name, or to call for in my name, that will I do. See, when you use the name of Jesus, heaven is backing you up. God is backing you up. And the Lord told the devil, devil, anytime they use the name of Jesus, you get out of there. You better bow, say, you, you bow your knee to that name. So if the devil can keep people blinded from understanding this, he'll keep them defeated. He'll run over them. He'll run over you. No, you keep that name active in your family. You bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Tell the devil, get your hands, get his hands off your family. Get his hands in the name of Jesus off your finances. Get his hands, and we need to bind together. The Bible says, they that bind together, depending upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. I believe in the name of Jesus. See, we have the right and the privilege to use his name. What it means to have privilege. I'm talking about the blessings that we have in the name of Jesus. Many people have a blessing, but they don't realize the importance of that blessing. You know, they ask God, you know, please, Lord, take this off of me. Please, you don't have to say, please, Lord. You can go to God and say, God, see, we go to God and try to get an answer. But the answer is in his word. You go to God and say, Father, I say, Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus to thank you because your word says this, your word says that. And God is pleased when you get that word in your heart. Remember, it says, my son, attend to thy words. God, David said, I hear thy word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Thank God for the word. What is privilege? A privilege is a special right, advantage, and uh, a granted, something granted to us, authority granted to us, available, is to a particular person or group. That's what a privilege is. You have that privilege. Just like your children, they have certain privileges that strangers don't have. You know, we're not strangers to the promise. God, we're not strangers no more. We're fellow citizens of the household of God. But as your family, your son, your daughter, whatever, they can come to your house anytime they want to. They don't ask you, they, can they come over? They can, they're welcome. Why? They have that privilege. They have that right to come see you, amen. If they need a key to your house, you give them a key. Hey, help yourself. Go in. But you know what? You don't give a stranger. You don't know the keys to your house. The Bible said that we have the keys of the kingdom. And that key, thank God, is the word of God, the name of Jesus. And we can go boldly to his presence because we have that privilege. We have that right. We have the blessings in the name of Jesus. So we have the right and the privilege to his name and prayer, and in combat. So again, I'm talking about the blessings. We, we need to hear these things time and time again. You know, the Father God has raised Jesus to the highest position in the universe. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus has the highest position in the universe. He is seated again at the Father. Now, Jesus, yes, he came to earth. He walked. In the, in, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and walked among us. Jesus walked among us here in a body. Perfect, perfect God, perfect man. 
live sinless. Thank God. But that back then they didn't use the name of Jesus because Jesus was here. But now since Jesus is not here, Jesus had been raised to a highest position. He is seated at the Father's right hand. And the Holy Spirit is here. Jesus is in us because they're one. Jesus is in us through the Holy Spirit, doing the work through us. It is he which begun a good work in you to perform it. So the Holy Spirit is in us. Jesus says, I'll go away. But when I go away, I'm going to send another comforter. In other words, in other words I'm a comforter, he said. But I'm going to go away. I, I'm, I'm in another position. I'm, I'm going to be raised up to a highest position in the universe. But I'm going to send another comforter, one just like me. And he shall live in you. He'll abide with you forever. He'll be in you. And he is the one that will create you. When you receive, when you receive me as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit will create you. Now, how do you understand that? Well, I understand that. Remember Genesis? When God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. The earth was without form and void. Water was upon the face of the earth. There was no land, it was all water, dark. Remember, when God created, he said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together and let dry land appear. That means dry land did not appear. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, something happened between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2 caused a flood, and the flood became, uh, the earth became a flood. So we don't get into that because it's a long story. That's not in this message. But the earth was without form and void. God did not create the earth without form and void. When he came back on the scene, that's why he told Adam to replenish the earth. Well, it had to been to replenish something. It had to been replenished before. He said, replenish the earth. But let's back up before we get to Adam. The earth was completely void, was dark. But at the same time, while the earth was dark and void, the Spirit of God was brooding upon the face of the earth. The Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the earth. Why? If it's dark and gloomy and water, no land, but the Spirit of God was moving upon the face, face of the earth. Why? Waiting for words to be spoken because God confirms his word with signs following by the Holy Spirit. So when God said, let there be light. The Spirit of God, which was already moving upon the face of the earth, all at once, light came. Let there be light. He called the, the, the light day, the darkness, he's called night. Let the waters be gathered together, and the Spirit of God begin to move. Well, right now, there's blessings in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Maybe your life is without form and void. Maybe everything that you're doing is just not good. It's just everything's messed up and you're lonely and, and just life is all messed up. You went through this tragedy and that one. And maybe you feel like a planet without form and void, don't know what to do with your life. But let me say the good news. Even though you're going through what you're going through right now, the Spirit of God is still moving around you, waiting for you to receive, waiting for what? Waiting for the words to be spoken. That's why the value, the, the word of God is what the Spirit of God uses to create things. The word of God. So the value of the word of God, when you get the word of God and, and ask Jesus to come into your heart, now the Spirit of God gets involved and you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now you begin to build that creation by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So even though you laugh is without form and void, speak the word of God. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, or death and life 
or in the direction of the tongue. I'm talking about the blessings in the name of Jesus, the blessings in the Word of God, the blessings in the Holy Spirit. All these are blessings that God has given to us to, to live uh, in, in that arena of the Word, the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. So God can turn your life around like God turned the earth without form and void, turned it around. He began to speak words, and the Holy Spirit confirmed the word, and he began to create this planet, and he did a great job, praise God. Well, you are a world, per se, of your own. You can change your world. You can change your destiny with the words. Thy words was to me, the Bible says, the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. So I want you, uh, I want you this evening to, to value the word. The value the word of God like you would value the word of a lawyer, doctor, or best friend. Place high value on the word. Because again, Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. You need to eat that word, live that word, and talk that word. Because you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of your testimony. My, it just seemed like I just begun, but I didn't want to go off the air with you tonight to, just to remind you. Just remind you that there's blessings in the name of Jesus. There's blessings in the Word of God. There's blessings, thank God, for the Holy Spirit in your life. I want to encourage you to get back into the Word of God. And, and for you that has not been in church yet, we want to invite you to get back in church as soon as possible because, oh yes, you can be blessed by the Word of God by watching us on uh, the monitor or TV or whatever. That's good, but it's nothing like when you come together with other saints, with other people together, because I believe the anointing is stronger. The, the anointing is stronger on me when people's there because it's something about when people come together in unity. And we've been having some outstanding services. Praise God, some great services. As a matter of fact, the message that I preach on the internet, a lot of times it's the same message I preach at church, but it's totally different, amen, totally different. But it's good regardless. But until we see you again, we'll have your chair reserved for you. We want to remind you again that we want to thank you again for your support uh, to this ministry. Uh, it's very vital that you continue the support uh, with your ties and offering. We thank you so much for that. Uh, me and Charlotte love you guys and we appreciate you and, and we appreciate all of you that, uh, that really uh, responded to our Pastor Appreciate You Day. You just made our, made our day. Thank you so much. We love you. We love you very much, and I, I want to remind you again that you are the head, and you can sit with me. You should know it by now. You can say this with me. I'll say it. You sit with me. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. It cannot be defeated. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Whom God leads, he feeds. Whom he guides, he provides. He's given his angel charge over me. To keep me in all my way. So go forth. Have a great evening. Remember, God gives his beloved sleep. We love you. Have a Holy Ghost tongue talking now. Thank you. Until next time. Praise God. Thank you for watching Living Word Church online and being part of our eFam. If you joined us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you joined us on Facebook, please like the page so you don't miss any future events or services. There are a couple ways you can support this awesome ministry. One, by sharing this video with friends and family and getting the word out. Two, by making a financial donation by clicking the Give Now button. This will help us to continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. Thank you again for watching. God bless.